Hello, good weekend to all. It's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the US markets for Monday's trading session, the um, 12th of September 2016. Be sure to visit Trade Signal, signals and market updates from leading providers. You can download the app at the Google Play and the Apple App Store, and certainly visit TradeSignal.com. Okay, now in terms of US markets, what a flush. Okay, what a flush. Okay, um, now looking back in hindsight, uh, some some sort of reflection over the weekend because I was certainly caught off with the uh, sell-off. I was up 150 odd points midweek or towards the end of the week before I uh, actually gave it all back on Friday or more. So I ended up minus 60 or minus 70 odd points for the week. So certainly uh, a negative week for me, even though it was positive all the way through. So again, Friday sell-off certainly caught me off guard. I was certainly buying dips only to be stopped out. So again, frustrating. Okay, frustrating. Well, that's part of the. Uh, the trading game folks okay that's part of the trading game you must go you must stick with your support and resistance levels and trade accordingly so you never change anything you continue with your same methodology and strategy now why did the market sell off so viciously now again looking back now it makes sense why mr draghi certainly didn't increase his qe because he was told in advance that the fed would do that for him in other words the fed would raise rates in september okay and uh, that certainly is the picture and the uh, the theme that's being painted by the Fed speakers. Now, uh, just an article that I've tweeted here, okay. Uh, apparently, it all started off with a rumour with regards to Fed, Lael Brainard. Apparently, he has a, uh, a, a potential speech. I mean, this is a quote I'll read. As the week drew to a close in the Fed's quiet period before meetings was about to settle in, investors recoiled over news that the central bank's most dovish official, Governor Lael Brainard, will be delivering a previously unannounced speech Monday at the Chicago Council of Global Affairs. The news sent the chill through markets Friday with major stock market averages taking a beating. Okay, so again, it's the um, mispricing of a potential rate hike, given the fact that uh, September was, was expected to be off the cards, given the weak data. And uh, that certainly isn't the case, obviously, with the election as well. That's unfolding in the US that the Fed will never even think about rating rates, and that's not the case, okay? When a market is quite susceptible to rumours, we're talking about a path to freeze oil production or whether the Fed is going to raise rates, etc., 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 okay? So the guessing game over whether the Fed might enact its first rate hike since December and only its second tightening in more than a decade has set off a fever pitch of horse trading, which is true. It really is horse trading, okay? So again, the uh, Miss uh, Rosengren, she's the one who started it all off. The speculation has been driven by divergent Fed speak, which again really is, is there to confuse us rather than anything else. Uh, the most recent Boston Fed President Eric Rosengren, uh, another usually uh, reliable dove, said the central bank risks financial stability or instability if it keeps uh, rates anchored so low. Uh, apparently another Fed speaker, President John Williams, a policy kindred spirit for Yellen, called for hiking sooner rather than later. So again, um, again, T. Lott Brainard was even more in favour of keeping rates where they were than the Fed chairman this year. Market present with whether the central bank was going to set up an unexpected rate hike at the September the 20th meeting. So again, it certainly seems like the uh, these individuals have been sent out, okay, to send a potential uh, warning signal, okay, prior to this lock-in period, okay, and that uh, there may well be a hike. Now, it does make sense because... Mr. Draghi would certainly have done an increased his QE or talked up the potential of QE, and he certainly remained silent. So again, why did he remain silent? The reason why he remained silent is because he's probably already been told that uh, no need for additional QE. You can keep your powder dry for now, save your bullets for another day, and the Fed will obviously raise rates. So he's been given that assurance, okay? And now it's starting to make sense, okay? Initially, the market's been very complacent in the last five, six, seven weeks. With, or even with the certain hawkish rhetoric, etc., even post Jackson Hole, the markets certainly don't believe that the Fed was going to raise rates. And now, all of a sudden, that certainly has been questioned, and the market's gone into a tailspin. Okay, certainly has gone into a tailspin. So, that certainly is the uh, theme. Even with the oil talk of the oil prices and the potential production out freeze, etc., that certainly didn't uh, certainly uh, stop the uh, potential uh, sell off either. Okay. Okay, right, so let's look at the technical picture then. So if the market certainly has sold off on the back of a, a stronger, um, or should we say a stronger dollar and a hawkish uh, rhetoric, let's see exactly where we stand. So looking at the daily chart of the US dollar, certainly bounced from support. So as you can see here, horizontal support was seen, okay, on the dollar index, and we certainly have bounced from there. 
Okay, so let's just uh, update this chart for you. Okay, so just taking the pivot high from here, connecting it across. Okay, so again, the bearish engulfing candle here from the uh, September the 6th certainly does hold for now. Okay, and uh, would indicate weakness. Now, looking at the four hour chart, let's just go to the 24 hour chart. I sh I, sorry, I do apologize for this. Let me just go to the 24 hour chart. Here we go, US dollar futures. Okay, S&P US dollar futures. Okay, so yes, daily chart is still an inside bar. We do have the unfilled gap that's left below. So again, then we have a further unfilled gap below as well. So two unfilled gaps in the dollar index, still an inside bar given the fact that, like I said, the September the 6th candle certainly remains bearish. So certainly take that on board. Bringing up the four hour chart on the dollar index, you are now coming into potential resistance on the four hour chart. You can see that previous support equals resistance here. Okay, if the market continues to move higher on this hawkish rhetoric and hawkish theme, then you are going to test the 200 MA and potentially test the 127 and the 127.6 level. Okay, so again, certain strength in the dollar index. We've certainly closed a gap though on the uh, 60 minute chart, so you are going to see some weakness here. You do have another unfilled gap above on the dollar index, so certainly all eyes on there. And we shall certainly see how the market reacts to that. So watch out for that. Okay, certainly watch out for that uh, in terms of the market reaction. So for now, uh, all the hawkish rhetoric from my perspective certainly seems to be uh, factored into markets here with the dollar index obviously into resistance. And you are going to see some uh, strength in the Aussie and the Kiwi. Now talking about the Aussie and Kiwi, let's just bring up the Aussie and Kiwi for you. Let's see where the Aussie and Kiwi stand here because they are very important indices in terms of risk. Okay, so let's go to the daily chart of the Aussie. Okay, an impressive flush, a very, very impressive flush on the Aussie. Okay, so again, impressive, impressive flush. Daily chart, really no real support seen until the 0.75 level. So again, certainly take that on board. So uh, you are looking at potentially further weakness in the Aussie. Uh, going lower, so again, certainly something to consider. Okay, let's bring up the Kiwi. New Zealand dollar, okay, so New Zealand dollar is a slightly different story altogether. Let's just go to the daily chart. You are now retesting the breakout, so the Kiwi certainly is into support. So previous resistance equals support on the Kiwi, and this is certainly a buying opportunity. That's one of the reasons why I'm already long on the Kiwi as well. It's a retest of the breakout zone, okay. So Kiwi certainly is indicating a move higher, although the Aussie certainly remains susceptible. So again, certainly something to consider. Let's bring up the Euro USD as well. Again, like I said, given the fact that the Euro USD uh, is uh, supported by the fact of lack of QE for Mr. Draghi, you should start to see the Euro start to move higher and appreciate. And that in turn obviously will send the US dollar lower, which in turn will help the commodities to a large extent. Let me just add this here one second. Here we go. Okay. Look. Daily chart of the Euro USD. Okay, so you certainly have put in a topping tail post Draghi. Okay, but from my perspective, the Euro USD still really certainly remains well bid given the fact that uh, you certainly have the lack of QE. We certainly did see a bid in the last few um, minutes from the 1.120 levels, certainly a 30 or 40 point uh, pop on the Euro USD given the fact that, like I said, certainly remains hawkish given the lack of QE. So again, certainly something to consider in terms of the euro, certainly seeing a pop there. Okay, so interesting, okay, interesting in terms of the dollar. Dollar index, very, very important. Let's bring up the uh, <coughs> potential bond market. Let's see if we can see the bonds, US 10 year. Let's bring up the 10 year here, okay. The 10 year is certainly selling off, okay. So 10 year, uh, as we all know, when bond prices fall, the yields rise, okay. And when the yields rise and that causes the uh, 
the dollar to start to rise as well. Now, looking at the bond market, you do have horizontal support on the daily chart here. So you are into potential intraday, well, so you do a potential horizontal support. Okay, if that were to fail and the, and the uh, bond market starts to uh, move low in terms of pricing, then you certainly have support around the 130 low, okay? And you have support around the 1295.5. Now, it certainly is a lot of support here where previous resistance equals support for the uh, bond market. So again, you can see here, certainly an impressive sell-off on the bond, bonds, the US 10-year, which in turn obviously was causing the dollar to appreciate and rally. So again, has to be respected, okay? Taking the pivot from here, no real dying, no real trend line can be seen there. So again, all eyes on the bond market, this is a 10-year, okay? So certainly keep an eye on this in terms of potential support. Certainly is support here on the bonds, okay? So looking for the bonds to move higher, which in turn causes the yields to fall and uh, in turn causes the dollar to fall as well. So we already know dollars into gap fill resistance, okay? And it's whether or not this Mr. Uh, Leil Brainard, if, it, if I can recollect correctly, again, Mr. Brainard, see what he will say on Monday if he does deliver this uh, this unexpected speech, which is very hawkish, and then we know exactly what's going to happen to the bonds. Bonds are going to continue to fall, dollars are going to continue to rise, and obviously will increase the risk aversion in the equity market as well. Okay, so those two things are very, very important. Let's bring up the price of oil as well for you. Oil prices obviously started to uh, see some weakness. Although having said that, we are into gap fill support on the daily chart of oil, okay? So daily chart of oil into gap fill support, certainly indicating a move higher. Going over to the four hour chart, looking at a different time frame, a different perspective. You are seeing potential support on the uh, oil, so previous resistance equals support. Okay, so that's something that certainly needs to be respected. Uh, other than that, I can't really pinpoint anything at all. You do have this weak diagonal trend line. So again, respect that for now. 60 minute chart, you are coming up to 200 MA support, previous resistance equals support. So again, looking for a uh, potential bounce here, okay? So again, certainly needs to be respected, okay? For now, okay, that's the situation that we find ourselves in. Okay, now in terms of the equity markets, now let's move over to equities. Let's start off with the Dow. First and foremost, Dow Jones, what a flush, okay? What's a flush? Impressive, okay? It's an impressive sell-off on the Dow. Okay, you do have potential gap fill support around the 7900. Again, it's going to be important as to uh, how the markets interpret this flush and this sell off. Um, it really is, I mean, on the daily chart, there's no real support now until the 7900 level. Okay, so again, that's certainly something to consider. Okay, something to consider in terms of uh, the market price action. Now, let's go to just uh, cross verify the. Uh, the actual Dow uh, with the Dow Transportation. Let's bring up the Dow Transport. So let's go to the daily chart of the Dow Transportation Index. You do have diagonal trend line support. So again, a potential bounce is on the uh, cards. Okay, so again, certainly something to consider. Okay, in terms of the market itself. Okay, now going over to the uh, S and P 500 now. Okay, if I go to the daily chart now again, this is really frustrating for me, folks, because. <clears throat> This is a pattern that I had highlighted and I, I, I was actually observing as well. Now, again, little did I know that Miss Rosengren would certainly trigger off this potential cataclysmic sell-off that we witnessed on Friday. I mean, a lot of the um, fundamentals were really there in the background as well. If you look back, I mean, we had weak German data consistently. Uh, Miss Merkel, obviously, under 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 finance, well, not financial, but political strain, given the fact that the anti-immigration party is winning at home. German data is coming in weak, okay. Lack of QE for Mr. Draghi, a North Korean missile test, okay. So a lot of factors were there, okay. But again, it's given the fact that the markets had been very lazy. Uh, it was a Friday, light volume, manipulation going into the close, which is very, very evident. I mean, it's just... It's, it's almost everybody expects it now because it's standard policy. And all of a sudden, we took a turn for the worst. Okay, so again, certainly something to uh, contemplate over. Okay, that's probably the best way of describing it. So again, looking for this flush on the HS formation, you are looking at 2121. Okay, on the uh, HS target, given the fact that the pivot high was 21. Uh, 2193, call it 2194 if you want. I can just adjust it. It's just a few uh, numbers. Okay, so 21.94 and taking it down to the uh, neckline, which is there around 21, 
2156 just to be in this okay let's just do the safe side 2156 uh, you're looking at a um, 2194 2156 looking at six eight eight points difference there okay so 90 to 60 is 30 36 point drop and you are looking at 2120 okay so uh, again uh, 2116 sorry so uh, again that's something to consider okay certainly something to consider in terms of the next potential move okay so 2118 sorry is the potential target the downside on the hns target so uh, we're not too far off about 2127 next potential support is 2116 then you have gap fill on the S&P 500 at 2097. So impressive, folks. All I can say is one hell of a flush, one hell of a flush, okay? And we all know why, hawkish rhetoric, market's obviously not positioned accordingly. Dollar starting to spy, uh, rip higher. We actually witnessed the bonds obviously moving lower. Everybody's pricing in a potential rate hike or surprise rate hike in September. And all of a sudden, risk assets go into uh, a, a vertical drop, okay? So again, it's frustrating because it's. I was short Thursday afternoon post Draghi, okay? Nothing happened. I was short all Friday morning, nothing happened. And as I say, don't short a dull market. And what happens? All of a sudden it becomes bright and the markets go into a frenzy. So again, frustrating. That's all I can say. Frustrating. But again, it's discipline, folks. It's all discipline. It's, it's adhering to your analysis and then remaining patient. Okay, but on the to the contrary, if I'd remained patient, uh, one or two things could have happened. Number one, given the fact that it's a light volume Friday, I would have been stopped out of my shorts because the markets is floats are higher. Or alternatively, I would have been rewarded handsomely. Okay, now last six or seven weeks, if I had uh, exited my shorts and uh, took a cautionary uh, stance, given the light volume manipulation higher, I was rewarded handsomely. Okay. I was rewarded handsomely okay so again uh, if uh, i'd waited i would have been punished okay so now i prevented myself from waiting and being patient and i was punished <laughs> so again it's it's this is trading folks okay this is trading you have to be patient it's you can always look back in hindsight okay um hindsight is always fantastic okay but nevertheless you learn from your mistakes okay so next time given the fact that the market now has shown different characteristics and it's shown that it actually can move lower, okay? And uh, given the fact that obviously uh, a lot of individuals or traders are coming back off their holidays now, going to see an increased volume and you are going to see real market moves. You will be rewarded for your bearish selves as much as you will for your bullish selves. So again, this market certainly showed its hand and I will adjust accordingly as well, okay? So daily chart of the uh, S&P 500 H&S formation. Okay, 2118 target and the downside. So again, be uh, understanding of that and uh, certainly remain open to that as well. We close the gap here at 2137. This is where I actually went long and I got stopped out at 2127. So again, that's certainly something to consider. We are we do have previous resistance equal su support here. And the next potential support is at 2096. So again, uh, again, I will rely on my fundamentals to give me a potential uh, picture. Again, if oil, Aussie, Kiwi, etc., they're all into support, then that certainly will be sufficient enough for me to go long. But again, we shall see how the Asian markets trade. Now, the daily chart of the uh, S&P 500 has left an unfilled gap at 2180, and we're currently trading around the 2120 zone going into Sunday's trading tonight. Okay, so again, certainly so something to consider. Now, let's cross verify that with a Russell 2000. Okay, so Russell 2000, let's just bring that up for you. Here we go. Okay, so what a sell-off on the Russell. I mean, look at that gap at 125 odd, and we're down on 121. What a sell-off. Okay, daily chart, the Russell, you are approaching gap fill. So ideally, 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 I do want to align it with that gap fill and look for a potential long. But having said that, there is horizontal support here on the Russell 2000, okay? Okie dokie. In terms of the vix okay so the vix let's just bring up the vix for you now this is another factor as well the vix into potential resistance as well okay looking at the daily chart certainly uh, extremely extremely uh, overbought 60 minute chart not too far off from the next potential gap fill now so if we can get into that gap fill at 32.7 more than happy to uh, actually go along on the s p 500 but what an a reverse from the vix how impressive is that 
very very impressive okay so again into gap fill resistance okay in terms <clears throat> let's look at the nasdaq now folks okay so daily chart of the nasdaq you are now coming into gap fill support here which is seen at uh, 4670 i'll be more than happy to go along the nasdaq on, on, on sunday tonight i'm more than happy to do so certainly looking for a bullish move on the nasdaq okay and you can cross reference that with the uh, the biotechs biotechs approaching gap fill support as well and uh, the semicons okay so gap fill so you have gap fill support down here but you certainly have gap fill support on the uh, semicons here too as well so again indicating a potential move higher so again looking for a potential pop in the uh, the nasdaq now the uh, the nasdaq has been uh, subdued due to apple if you look at the daily chart of apple there certainly is potentially some more to go in terms of apple you've got 200 ma then you've got previous support equals previous resistance equals support as well so apple certainly remains vulnerable so again apple did lead the sell-off given the lack of uh, any innovation and new products so again that certainly does remain a concern and again that's another trade that i was expecting but didn't actually play out we do have a diagonal trend line though and let's just see exactly how this trend line uh, reacts okay although facebook amazon google netflix etc all trying to break out only to see the market rev totally reverse i mean that's very very impressive energy sector certainly under pressure as well so again a lot of factors are going to come into play on monday's uh, trading session and it'll be interesting to see how we uh, respond okay but my um, understanding will certainly will be looking to potentially buy this dip here given the fact that the markets certainly have been an uptrend as of late and you will see some potential dip buying as well so certainly looking for a potential pop higher but again respect the 2116 sorry 2118 level on the s p 500 once we reach that 2118 2120 zone i'll be more than happy to start organizing potential long positions okay okay i think that's a market wrap then it's certainly been a long video okay so uh, be please sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs and take advantage of that 25 percent bonus goodbye now